This is Selma Schimmel, and you are looking live at the great city of Chicago, which is once again playing host to the American Society of Clinical Oncology, ASCO. This is ASCO's 49th annual meeting, and this year's theme could not be more appropriate, Building Bridges to Conquer Cancer. More than 30,000 of the world's foremost cancer specialists are here, and so is The Group Room, making our 15th appearance at ASCO and one of our very best. Joining me now is Dr. Gregory Daniels from the UC San Diego Moores Cancer Center. Dr. Daniels is an Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine in Hematology and Oncology. Welcome. Thank you. Where immunotherapy is making its greatest impact in melanoma. Mm -hmm. We have hopes for lung. We have hopes for ovarian. Could you give us an overview of the field? And while in our minds the concept is so simple, Imagine if we could develop all these vaccines. Why, though, is what seems to be so simple, so challenging to bring to fruition? In the last year or so, the rug's been pulled out from underneath our therapeutic thinking. And over the last couple years, a lot of targeted therapies have, have been making it into the clinic and showing good benefit. Um, but I believe this is really the year that immune therapies broke out and made their mark. And you mentioned melanoma. Um, but what's happening in solid tumors in general is this realization that our old thinking that tumors were, or the immune therapy, immune system was just there to get rid of cancers. Um, the immune system is actually helping cancers grow. And so a lot of our initial attempts at immune therapy were based on some incorrect assumptions um, derived from just the way we looked at the world as well as our animal models. Um, but now um, it's pretty clear that we can make major impacts on how tumors grow and get that ultimate goal, which is durable long-term responses in the absence of continuing therapies. And that's the promise that immune therapy has always held for us, but that it's finally being delivered. How are immunotherapies actually delivered to a patient? Clearly at this meeting, um, checkpoint inhibitors got a lot of press. And before we had an immune therapy approved in melanoma was an, an antibody that's given in the vein that blocks some inhibitory pathways in the immune system. At this meeting, um, a sister compound has come out. And it really has two advantages. Um, it seems to be a little more specific to that type of um, activation state that's needed for tumor uh, immune response. And the flip side is that it has less toxicities than we've seen before with other immune therapies. And we have to maximize, obviously, a response, but minimize toxicities. Where do you guess with the success of melanoma, mm -hmm. which probably will is going to begin to raise the bar higher and higher for exploring other solid tumors. Yeah. Lung cancer, it's appearing to be a breakthrough there. I think melanoma has always given us, as well as renal cell, that insight that we should be able to cure cancers. We just didn't know where that mark was. It was stuck for a long time at 6%, then 10%. and. Um, Kind of the latest um, therapies are showing us maybe 50%. You know, things are early, but... Um, that's, that's a that's, huge it's, number. It's amazing. And these are treatments that would be widely available, unlike some of the other ones that have been limited to specialized treatment centers and stuff. With limited so, toxicity? With manageable toxicity. Um, still going to keep an oncologist employed, but um, these are drugs that also have a finite exposure to the patients. So targeted therapies, you need pretty much chronic exposure and comes with that chronic toxicities. Immune therapies, you go in, you activate, and if you get a durable response, it's a durable response. You don't need to continue um, to um, treat the patients with, with these things. What a lot of melanoma physicians are thinking is, well, let's see, we usually have a secondary focus, whether it's lung cancer or head and neck cancer, how do we apply these tools to these other, these other tumor types? And that's really kind of very exciting. So lung cancer um, has several phase three studies 
here's a tumor that was a few years back not felt to be immunologically responsive, again based on early models, the way we were thinking about things. Um, but now we're seeing responses on the order of what we see in melanoma for immune therapies. And we just expanded the potential patient benefits from, you know, the not small number of melanoma patients out there, but the huge number of lung cancer patients out there. Um, that, um, you know, up to now we've been making progress, but really incremental progress. This is a sea change progress. The challenge now is how do we combine them? How do we get from just 50% long term um, deep responses in melanoma to 100%? And it's likely not going to be one agent to get us there. It's going to be, again, getting to that understanding of how our therapies are working, um, applying them appropriately, combining them or sequencing in the appropriate way um, that's going to get us to that um, mark where I would expect every patient with a solid tumor should benefit from immune therapy. When you mentioned the word sea change before, are you saying that at this meeting the data that was presented for melanoma in itself yeah. was the big game changer? Oh yeah. Will it change clinical practice? Absolutely. Thank you. Dr. Gregory Daniels, Associate Clinical Professor of Medicine at UC San Diego Moore's Cancer Center in Southern California. Thank you. Thank you very much.